Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Mastella. These are the Joint Jack Chronicles. CMC Tendon Transfer Arthroplasty. Today we're going to talk about one of the most common forms of degenerative arthritis in the human, the CMC joint, the base of the thumb. It's not based on the propensity for arthritis based on your DNA. It's because of the anatomy of that CMC joint. This represents the thumb metacarpal. It's sitting on the trapezium. The trapezium sits on the scaphoid. This represents the index metacarpal. Degenerative arthritis occurs because, as I said, of the anatomy of anybody's particular joint, which is why it's almost always bilateral and also seldom compensable in nature. If there's a little, we'll think of it this way, if there's a little increased slope to the trapezium, the metacarpal tends to skid all your life with everything you do, and that skidding motion gradually wears the cartilage and develops an osteophyte. The thumb works its way laterally off the trapezium, more and more unstable, and the body, body builds an osteophyte, which looks a lot like the, a, a boot. And here you see on the x-ray, this would be the heel of the boot, this would be the toe of the boot, and it's really a huge, probably one of the biggest osteophytes for any size joint in the body. And that toe of the boot is what the metacarpal sits on. It has obviously no adequate cartilage. Pain is significant, function is stopped. The surgery for this is not the same as most of the degenerative arthritis in the rest of the body. Interposition arthroplasty means we put a total knee between the femur and the tibia, or a total hip, or implants in the middle joints of the fingers. These are interposition arthroplasties, where you put something between the two ends of the bone to keep them from making contact and causing pain does not apply adequately to the CMC joint because the base of the thumb is so unstable. This is the procedure, we call it a suspension arthroplasty. There are many different ways to do it and we'll try and show you some of the basic principles. The first thing we do is remove the trapezium. With the trapezium out of the way, we then take the toe of the boot and this is, almost every operation has got a key small feature that is mandatory to its success. And in this procedure, the complete removal of the toe of the boot is necessary. That's all got to go. What we do then is put a drill hole in the metacarpal. And there is a standard procedure where the, we take half of the flexor carpi radialis. And I'm going to let the red half represent half of the flexor carpi radialis, which we have taken up in the forearm and brought down to the surgical site. The blue cord represents the intact half of the flexor carpi radialis. There's no reason to take the whole tendon. The body will build this back up to normal size and function within a month or two if you just leave half of the flexor carpi radialis. The operations out there basically feed this tendon, this half of the flexor carpi radialis, through the metacarpal base and then use that to sling the thumb metacarpal up in place. The problem is that this becomes the pivot point. The entrance of the tendon into that side of the metacarpal becomes the pivot point. And even if you pull it tight, make it very uh, suspended, the metacarpal well up, you can see the space we have between the metacarpal and the scaphoid can never get much more than that at its tightest. Number two, there is a portion of the metacarpal which has to kick in when the thumb abducts. And that's one of the absolute necessities to the post-op status. The thumb metacarpal has to be able to abduct. So what we did, uh, we've, the first one was in the late 80s, and we've done over 1,000 of these at this point, is to create this outer cortex as our pivot point. And if we create the outer cortex as our pivot point, by running that same tendon, half of the flexor carpi radialis, pull on that point. What we can do then is create this outer cortex as our pivot point. You notice that we've made a small groove so that the tendon is going to stay centered in the, in the metacarpal. But look at what we can do in terms of making that the pivot point. We can elevate that metacarpal by drawing on that tendon and look at where I can put the, I'll just hold that. 
Look at where the metacarpal can be elevated away from the scaphoid. Look at the, you could actually fit the trapezium back in under the metacarpal. So this suspension operation uses the outer cortex. The outer lateral cortex is our pivot point. That lets us go high. Number two, notice that there is no, there is no proximal part of the metacarpal that has to move toward the, the index metacarpal and the trapezoid. So there is no, nothing to block the metacarpal from swinging out. It pivots on the outer cortex. It abducts beautifully. It's stabilized all the way up in its normal position, and there is no mm, ulnar deviation, if you will, of the proximal part of that metacarpal. Once we have it there, we'll take this and drop it around these two, and basically just feed it around, probably on average, Julie, we do about three times, usually three, sometimes four. And what that does now is secure the the uh, tenon in position, and we bring this down, throw a little stitch in it into the intact part of the flexor carpi radialis, but that's probably not necessary. This does not want to unravel. But what this does do, it lets us mobilize this thumb in two and a half weeks. There's no place that this can, no way that this can get loose, and as I say, we've done uh, a little over a thousand of these since the late 80s, and we turn these people loose in two and a half weeks. And that makes a huge difference to the patient and their recovery rate. But what it does is hold that thumb metacarpal up, suspending it. We don't worry about any interposition here. And the, and the uh, tendon wrapping around itself locks the, the uh, repair, if you will, with just a single little 5-0 vicral to attach it to this tendon. And you don't need anything more than that to secure it. Um, when we first run the tendon through, we'll sometimes put a stitch to lock it in place until we finish the, the wraparound. And that's essentially the procedure. So in essence, the toe of the boot must come off. This is a suspension operation, not an interposition. There's nothing we're trying to fit, uh, such as the plastic ones we used 30, 40 years ago, silicone implants, uh, the various types of metal implants that have been designed, the pieces of Teflon that have used, been used to sew between them. None of those, I think, have any application in the CMC reconstruction. Thank you.